Okay. Uh, here we have this 65 inch uh, LG uh, LED TV. And uh, you'll see what happens. Get a slight picture flash, LG logo. TV backlight cuts off. Uh, pretty much a backlight problem. Uh, so we'll proceed to take this TV apart here, uh, disassemble it, just pretty much self explanatory. Remove all of the screws on the outside and the screws in the middle. That's, those are for your wall mounts. Pretty easy. Uh, to verify this model number, this is an LG 65 Unicorn Henry 5500 65 inch LED TV. Okay, we got our back cover off. Um, see, we have our power supply, main board, and our driver board in which the LEDs are connected to. That is the line going inside the TV for the LEDs. Uh, this one uses a driver board because it has uh, 24 strips. Okay, so it uses a separate driver board for the LEDs. And as you can see, there are six lines, four LED strips on each line. The lines start on the outside and work their way in. Okay, so LED 1 minus, LED 1 plus on the outside, 2 plus, 2 minus, second pins, third pins, 3, and so on. So we'll do a little test and see if we can find out which line is actually bad. Um, if there is a bad line or LED strip or whatever. So we'll use our handy LED checker and um, we'll proceed. Uh, like I said, the, we'll work our way outside and on the first line and work our way in. The black wire is always negative. So line one, approximately 54 volts. Okay, we'll go to the next line. Line two, um, okay, uh, that one's reading open there. Line three third pin from the end 54 volts line 4 54 volts Four volts again on line five and our last and final line the two pins right next to each other in the middle line six okay uh, so we definitely have an open line which is line two okay so that's pretty much a good sign uh, with just one line is bad so it's probably just one LED okay so we'll proceed to go ahead and uh, disassemble this TV all the way to the LED strips Okay, uh, first thing we'll do is remove our outer our outer bezel. Uh, the screws around the black outer bezel uh, needs to come off. I believe they're on all sides. And at first, as first as usual, I'll always disconnect my LDVS cable from the main board. Just make sure that there's, there's no current going through that, and I won't forget in the future. <clears throat> in most cases, I'll go ahead and uh, take it off and tape it to the uh, chassis. Um, and uh, they got some rubber stuff here, which is kind of weird there, but uh, <laughs> it's crazy on the um, connectors going from the T-Con to the driver boards. We'll definitely connect, disconnect those right now. Uh, there's also some black tape around this TV on, this, on both ends um, covering some of the screws I guess. I think that's just for uh, warranty purposes um, in case the TV's under warranty you know they don't want you to um, you know, that way they'll know if someone's been in it, but this TV is way out of warranty. There 
is a warranty sticker on one of those bl uh, black pieces of tape. Okay, and as usual, I just remove my speakers left and right. We'll also remove our toggle switch uh, with the power button on there that only goes in one way, okay. Then I'll flip my TV over and then I'll proceed to remove the screws around that outer bezel. So we, so we can then proceed to take off the screen. Once all the screws are removed, that should come up pretty easily. Put that to the side. It's kind of flimsy, so try not to break it. And then we have a metal plate on the bottom protecting the driver boards. Uh, there's just two screws on it, uh, one on each end. As you can see, I have it marked in red. We'll just pull those out and that should lift right up. Don't forget to put that back on when you read some of the TV. Okay, now we got our driver, our driver boards. They are clipped with these little clips. Uh, just kind of like squeeze them at the top and pull them down. Or just squeeze them and use your finger and pull it a loose. Um, some of them are kind of stubborn, but once those are released on both sides, we can then proceed to remove our, uh, well, un unlock our driver boards. Uh, this also has some tape on the driver boards, also. Make sure that you remove that. Got some more tape on the end. I guess they use that for grinding purposes. I'm not sure. I don't know why they got that there, but. And we can proceed to take our driver, pull our driver boards up and tape them to the screen. Do not tear those rumor connectors. Okay, our driver boards are up and taped to the screen. We'll proceed to use our suction cups and remove our screen. Set it to the side in a safe place. Do not set anything on top of it. Now we'll remove our support bracket for our diffuser screens. As usual, I always mark one side put it back in there the same exact way uh, that is all one piece which is good and there's some little clips up underneath that we can just use our fingernail or a screwdriver and uh, you'll see it once you zoom in on it you can just uh, unclip it all the way around that should come right up Nothing too sophisticated about that, right? Once that's up, make sure you don't break that. 
that's also flimsy <laughs> okay we'll take that off and now we can remove our diffuser screens I think there's also some tape on one to two sides holding it down. Just kind of like pull it up, keep them, keep them all together. I also put a little dot on the very edge. Make sure that goes in the same way. Also mark the chassis with the red dot. Okay, now we've almost we're almost to our LEDs. They are they are visible. We just need to remove the white paper but it has 72 screws in it <laughs> which is crazy and also some uh, spacers in it that we need to remove um wow that's crazy it's almost like they don't want you to even go, go this far but yeah we gotta care for that right that's not gonna stop us right I believe those are like number one Phillips uh, but to be careful, don't strip them. Okay, I got all my screws out pretty much, except for the screws that I actually are holding in the LED uh, strips. Uh, look at all those screws. That is uh, ridiculous. That's just for the paper. <laughs> holding the paper in, okay. And uh, we'll proceed to remove our spacers, uh, which of course you have to go to the back and back of the TV, turn the TV around, turn the chassis around, and squeeze those out. Okay, don't pull them out, don't break them. They kind of support the screen when you put it back on, and the and the uh, diffuser screens. We'll also mark our paper. That pretty much only goes in one way, but uh, this is just a habit that I do. Um, and then that should pull right up. Uh, there is some little sticky stuff around the ends there, so try not to tear the paper. If it does tear, it's no big deal. Just, you know, as long as you don't tear it completely in half or anything, it, it should be okay. But um, just go ahead and pull that paper up. And now, as you can see, we have access to our LEDs and we could LED strips and we can test each one of them. Like I said, there are 24 strips, five LEDs on each strip. And you can start at either strip that you want. Um, there are test points on each individual LED, also on the entire strip. Um, so right there by the plug, I think they are labeled plus and minus. And so like the strips up like that. Uh, the one that does not light up is usually the bad one with the bad LED on it and as you can see if you do find a bad strip you can test just go down the line and test each individual LED so that evidently is a good strip I'm using that for an example Okay, looks like that is our bad strip. And as you see, that very first LED on that strip uh, is bad. And that's most likely our $2 problem right there, right? If you want to get the entire strips without doing any soldering, just use the bottom number of the CV and go on eBay and I'm pretty sure you'll find it. Or just Google it, UN65, I'm sorry, 65 UH5500 LED strips. Google that and that should come up. You probably only need, probably only need to order maybe one or two for this TV. 
Um, but we'll go ahead and just uh, work our magic here, just replace the individual LED. I actually pried my lens cover up. I'll use my hot air. Use my tweezers and that comes right off. Okay. Just remember one side is positive, one side is negative, just like a diode or cathode nano, just like a diode. Okay, of course I'm using the opposite uh, LEDs. Um, so actually the short part is actually the long part of my LED. So I'm going to make that part longer. You can just watch my other videos and you know you'll get a pretty much good idea of what I'm trying to do here. So I want to short the LED out when I solder it in there. Um, or short the trace. Get my new LED. As you can see it has two sides, a long side and a short side. Okay. I'm just kind of, kind of like eyeball it and, and, and put the, sh the short side to the edge of the um, of the other trace and make sure I have enough room on my long side to solder it in there. I use a little flux, put it on each side. Put a little solder on my tip and just tack it down, pretty simple. Okay, I'll check the entire strip again, and as you can see, we are good. We we'll actually glue our lens cover back on there. Make sure that your lens, your LED lens cover, is center over the LED. The little hole in the middle there should be directly over the LED. I'll just tack a, a tiny drop of super glue on each end. And just kind of like hold it down for about 15, 20 seconds to let it dry, about a minute or so. Um, actually, I use another another lens cover with the studs in the middle, uh, so I can just jack it up just a little bit. And um, we'll go ahead and test fire it again. Make sure everything lights up. And voila. Magic. They are all lit up, which is good. Okay, I am not going to put all those screws back in that white paper. Just make sure that you do not forget to put in your spacers. Okay. I will double check it again once I have my diffuser lenses back on to make sure that uh, you know nothing's wrong or make sure it's all even there. The light is even. Okay, so far so good. We'll go ahead and put our support bracket in for our diffuser lenses with diffuser screens. Once that's in, we can actually lay our, lay our actual screen back in place. 
uh, make sure that the screen is flush on all sides. Uh, if there is a side sticking up, uh, you will crack it when you put the bezel on it. So make sure that it is flush. There's nothing sticking up. It's not overlapping over the edge. Okay, we'll proceed after that to go ahead and mount our driver boards back in place. Make sure you, you do that before you put on your outer bezel. It's much easier. And as you can see, I'm double checking to make sure it is flush. Okay, uh, we'll put our bracket back over our metal, uh, I guess, protective or support bracket back over our at the, the bottom of the screen, over our driver boards. Uh, it only kind of goes in one way. Be careful not to force it down and crack the screen. It should lock right in place. There's some little notches on the on, on the bottom side. And uh, we'll put our two silver screws back in. Uh, so actually I did I uh, did put our, um, after I did that, I did put the um, outer bezel back on and screwed, those back, screwed that back in. Um, pretty much self-explanatory. I don't need to show you all that, right? We'll put in our speakers. Plug our LWS cable back into our main board and also plug in our driver boards back into our TCOM board. And it looks like, well, there you have it. We are back in business. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Make sure you do subscribe for more videos like this. Appreciate you guys watching. watching. And once again, Big Dog out.